So now I've knit all the way around on 15 stitches. And now I'm going to start the instructions. So let me show you. Here I'm going to pull both, both sets of stitches onto their cable. So let me show you. So I, I always use this purple marker as my stick number one, my needle number one. So there's double pointed needle number one, double pointed needle two would be between the markers, and then the third double pointed needle would be these last stitches. So that's how I can still follow the instructions for the three double pointed needles instructions, but I'm using two circular needles. Now let me show you the part of the knocker that we're, we're, actually, you, we're actually starting. So the 15 stitches are right here, and now we're going to start doing increases, and we're going to start making, from going from 15 stitches, we're going to start spreading them out. And depending on what size knitted knocker you're going to make is how many stitches you're going to increase. But you can see here there's three sections. One, two, three. So this is the stitches I start with. And then my, my uh, marker would be here. And then here's the stitches between the markers. And then my th second marker would be here on this line. So I have stick number one, stick number two, and stick number three. Okay, so that's where we're at. Then you will, you will do increases until you get to the size of knocker you want to make. Then you will work two rows of purl stitches where you just purl all the way around and that kind of divides the knocker. And then the top half you will do decreases. So you still have the three sections, one, two, three, but you'll start doing decreases until you get to the very tip. You can, they, there are instructions on how to make these with a little bit of an I-cord and you can make a, a small nipple, but they suggested not putting the nipples on them because most women request them without. So you could ha make some with and some without, but all the ones I make, I do without. The instructions right off the bat says round one, which is really my round two, but we're gonna call it round one. It says to knit to the last stitch and then do a knit into the front and the back. So again, I'm gonna use just the first I'm going to use just the first five stitches as my beginning. So I'm going to knit to the last stitch before the marker, and then I'm going to knit into the front and the back. It says repeat for needle two and three. So we'll do the same thing. We'll knit to one stitch before the marker, and we'll do a knit into the front and back, and then we'll knit to the last stitch and do a knit into the front and the back. So after this round, we will have increased by three stitches. All right, so I pull my stitches up here. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna do an increase in the very last stitch before the marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just knit that first stitch can be a little tight, typically, but I knit. Now let me show you what I do in order to not get what's called laddering happening. I knit two stitches and then I pull super, super hard. You can see from my thumb that I am pulling very tight on my first two stitches and that really closes the gap so you won't get a ladder effect. So I, whenever I start a new needle, I pull really tight. And now the rest of my stitches will be my normal tension. I'm gonna knit to the last stitch, which is the next stitch is the last stitch. And I'm gonna knit into the front and then reach around and knit into the back of the same stitch. I'm working an increase. 
I knit into the front and the back, fly my switch my marker over, and then knit to the next marker. So I knit here to the end of the, this, then I flip this over, pull the, these stitches onto the cord, pull the top row onto the, onto the needle, and I'm ready to work what I'm pulling up on my needles. I'm going to knit to that last stitch. Again, I'm going to pull pretty tight here. I knit two stitches and then I pull really, really tight to close up that gap so there won't be a ladder effect. So I pull tight and I'm going to do an increase in this next stitch, knit into the front and the back, move my marker, knit to the last stitch. So this would be stick number three, double pointed needle number three. Last stitch, knit into the front and the back. So I've completed row one. We've completed row one. So I'm going to go ahead now and do row two. Pull my needles, my stitches onto my needle. You can also work this same pattern using magic loop. If you want to use one long circular needle, there are instructions written on the website for using magic loop. I prefer two circulars rather than magic loop. So there I've got my stitches ready to go. I'm ready for round two. And round two says to knit into the front and the back of the very first stitch, then knit to the last stitch and do another knit into the front and back. So on this row, we're gonna be increasing the first stitch and the last stitch of each section. And we will increase by six this time. So this whole pattern up to this point is two different ro rows, two increase rows. One row, you always increase the last stitch and every other row you increase the first stitch. So we're going to do an increase on this very first stitch. You want to make sure you're picking up the yarn that goes back to the ball and not your tail because it's kind of long and you can kind of accidentally grab it. So I'm going to do a knit into the front and the back. I'm going to pull really tight because I want to close up the ladder pull tight and now I'm going to knit to the last stitch before the marker and do another increase it last stitch I'm going to do the increase Now I'm going to do, this is my second needle, so now I'm going to do a knit into the front and the back on this first stitch. Change my needles. Pull those back onto the cord. Pull these on the cord back up onto the needle. Now this can be confusing sometimes when you just pick it up. You might get confused that this is the beginning of a row, but remember this is not the beginning of a row even though my, my stitches are, are just being started on this needle. This isn't the beginning of a row. The beginning of the row is this set of stitches here. So this is the second needle the, this is the continuation of the stitches on the second needle. So I won't do an increase there. Sometimes you can kind of get sidetracked and forget where you are on the needles and do an increase there, but you don't want to. You just want to 
keep knitting. I'm going to pull really, really tight on my second stitch to keep that laddering from happening. Now I'm to the last stitch. I'm going to do an increase. There we go. Do an increase. Move my marker. I'm going to do an increase here on the first stitch. And then when I get to the last stitch, you can hear my cat meowing. I'm going to do an increase. Okay, I've just completed round two. So now you can kind of see where we're heading. You can kind of see where we're heading. So now we're going to repeat those same exact two rows over and over. So let me show you a little trick too to know where you are in the pattern. If you should put this down at this point, you can keep a little side note where you can tick off which row you just finished. I just finished row two. But if you put this down and you pick it back up later and you can't remember whether you just worked row one or row two, here's how you can tell. Since row two we did an increase in the first stitch and we did a knit into the front and the back. You can kind of see here, let me point it out to you, there's a little bump. It almost looks like a pearl bump. Do you see the first stitch looks normal? The second stitch, there's a little bitty bump right there. That was the increase that we did in the row below, the row before. We did a knit into the front and the back and doing that creates this little bitty bump. So when you pick your knitting up and you're ready to do the next row and you don't know if you're on row one or two, you look to see, do I see that little bump? If I see it right underneath the second stitch, I see it, that means I'm ready for row one. If you don't see it, and it's a little further down, if you don't see it, then you know you're ready for row two. So since I did an increase on the first stitch, the last row, this round, I don't want to do an increase here. So I'm just going to knit normal. So I'm working row one. And working row one, we are only doing increases on the last stitch. Stitch. So we're just going to knit to the last stitch and work the increase. There we go. Slide the marker over. Again, I, I just double check. I can see that little bump right below stitch number two. So I know I just need to knit past it. So just knit it without doing any increases. Swap over to the next needle. We'll slide them down here to the other end and we continue on. Again, that's not the beginning of a row. This is the middle of a row middle of a second stick. So we continue on just knitting. I'm pulling tight on those first two stitches and then continuing on in my regular tension. Knit into the front and the back of the last stitch. You can see the little bump so I'm going to continue to knit. So this is row one again, where we only increase on the last stitch. There's the last stitch. There we go. We've gone around a couple of more times, or at least three times. So now you can kind of see where we're going. See how it's starting to do increases and it's starting to spread out. 
So you're going to continue working those two rows. You continue to use those two rows until you've cast on or you've increased to whatever size you're making. And the instructions will tell you for each size how many stitches you want on each of the three needles. So in between my stitch markers, I will do increases until I have the right amount of stitches and then I will do two rows of only purling. So I don't do any increases. I just purl two rows and that makes that divider. And then the last part of the instructions says to do decreases always at the end of each double pointed needle. So I will always, I won't do any increases anymore. I will just knit until I get to two stitches before the marker and knit two together, then knit till I get to the two stitches before the marker, knit two together, and then knit to the end, knit two together. So you continually go the exact same way around the three needles, or in our case, the two needles but with the, the markers denoting the three sticks and you just keep decreasing always at the end until you get to where you have two stitches left in each section. So I'll have two stitches, a marker, two stitches, a marker, two stitches. Then I cut my tail about 10 inches and I'll take a big yarn needle, a darning needle, and I will run the darning needle through the six stitches that are left, and then I cinch it, and then I poke it through and tie a knot, and inside I just leave the, um, the yarn that's left. You could weave it in, but no one's ever going to see it, so you just tuck it inside. Then I stuff it. I get the polyfill at Joann's. I stuff it. You tend to overstuff them. Let me switch back to my normal camera. You tend to overstuff them. And the reason you do that is the woman who gets this may want the knocker to be a little firmer. She can take stuffing out and make it a little squishier. And it's a whole lot easier for the person who receives these to take stuffing out to get the size and the shape they want rather than to have to go to the craft store and buy a big bag of fluff just to put a little more in. So I overstuff them pretty good because the person who gets these can make them how she wants them. So this is polyester inside so these can be, the stuffing can be pulled out and you can wash these. These are cotton so it's like a washcloth. They can be washed and then you can stuff all the stuffing back in and continue going. So like I said I make about, I make about 40 of these or so every six months to take to my doctors. It's a great project. It really helps women who've had mastectomies and are flat chested or don't have much left on their chest and it just gives them a little sense of looking and feeling a little more normal. They are very soft. It does not hurt up against your scar, obviously taking the pin out, but these laying against your scar does not hurt and it feels very comfortable. They're very lightweight it's a great project and a great organization. If you don't have people in your area that you can give these to, or you're not, you don't have a doctor's office that you could work with, you can go to knittedknockers.org and send your knockers unstuffed. You don't have to stuff them. You just, they'll give you instructions on how to do it, but you will tell them, let them know that you used yarn that was on their approved list and what size these are and you send them unstuffed to knitted knockers they'll stuff them and then they mail them out to women who need them so if you don't have anybody local that you can work with you can make your knockers and send them to knitted knockers they send out about a thousand knockers per month a thousand knockers 
per month is what they t typically need and send out and they need all the sizes so give it a try if it's something you're interested in doing give it a try they're not hard to make if you need further instructions or want to see how I finish one leave that in the comments below I'll show you how I do the pearl row and then how I end the th the uh, knocker if you're interested in that they also have many videos on their website on knittedknockers.org if you want to see how they tell you to finish them um, you can watch them there so I hope that helps I enjoy making these they take just a few hours to make and like I said I really enjoy working on two circular needles rather than the double points and that's how I do it so thanks for watching again if you have any questions or comments leave them below in the comment section and uh, we'll be back soon with another video thanks for watching